All right, we're already recording, but we're going to bust it onto the stream in about two minutes. Cool. My man. I'll introduce you. Yeah, we can just mess around. I'll introduce you. What notes are uh, went walking? It's in drop, just like drop D tuning. So D? Yeah. Specific notes is like. Ready? Splash intro. Mic auxiliary is on. Start. What's up? Welcome back to the Zinzerna Music Hour, ladies and gentlemen, people of all ages. We got myself, your host, P.T. Burnham, and this guy, my friend, Aaron Brookshire, MC and I. Now, why am I here on this couch and not inside my usual synth lab? I'm down here in North Carolina undisclosed location known as the Jelly Bush. Been working on a couple of mixes with my boy. It's for a new album coming out. It's called Nothing Beats a Try. I've known Aaron for a long time. We are co-affiliates on Cold Rhymes Records under the banner of Dan Keach. Shout outs to Dan Keach and shout out, bro. Cold Rhymes Records. And shout outs to Erica P. Hi, Keach. All Cold Rhymes crew. The whole crew. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, today the, the origins of this record uh, that's coming, coming to you. And, the, and, and maybe provide some, um, a, a little uh, preview of some of the, the sound that's going to be happening. Not the recorded sound. I think we might just have my man play a little live joint on the acoustic guitar. But before we do all that, I got my ambient machine here. Thought I'd kick it. If you're in the chat, let us know. What's up, Suburban Slang? What up? We got Cold Rhymes in the house tonight. I got my hair all 
It was looking like some Dr. Seuss type shit earlier with like this one little wire sticking out. Um, but yeah, been, been down here for a couple of days working on the final mixes. I think we have basically solidified the final mixes. Isn't that exciting, Erica? You'll we have out. we have it in our hot little hands and we are ready to hand it off to, I believe Grant is gonna be doing the mastering. So Grant not only featured as a rapper, what's his, his rap name? His... Vita Laring Larangis. Vita Larangis. Yeah, it's Grant Live Say Scrambled Up to make a name. It's right. Like an anagram. Vita Larangis. And um, Twin Zeus are also on the track. Uh, and they were featured on the Necessary Peoples. You can check them out on the Necessary People. That's right, they are Necessary People. You can check them out on that record. Uh, highly recommend that record for anybody that hasn't heard of it. Um, that's actually the name of the record. Uh, Erica has already typed it into the chat there, so you can Google that under Cold Rhymes Records. But uh, we're down here in North Carolina. It's been beautiful. The sun has been gorgeous. We've been shooting video for the album. We've been climbing mountains. Hell yeah. Steam chalice. Doing those things. In fact, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, Maybe we do want to, you think you could play Steam Chalice too? Yeah, 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 for sure. We for could sure. do Steam Chalice and Whitmore. Yeah, I think. yeah. Uh, cool. So, so yeah, this album, uh, I think I'm going to let my man tell a lot about the origins of it. But, you know, you will be a little bit familiar with the origins if you were tuned in, what is this, about a year ago now? A little, little more. A little less than a year. A little less than a year ago. It was in uh, July. I think when we did the stream at another location a couple houses away from this house. That's right. And that was during the genesis of all this, really the sort of yeah. the beginning of me and uh, Aaron coming together yeah. to do the album. So you can check back to that stream. That's part of season one. Uh, but yeah, that was when that all started. We've just been working on the mixes. Now, Aaron... Let's talk a little bit about how the whole thing started at the very beginning, where you start writing these tracks. Yeah. Um, so, at least two of them out of the six or seven that we got, um, I had uh, written with my brother Joshua. We had a group called Speak and I, also representing Cold Rhymes yeah. Records. And um, we were a band for over 10 years. And, um, Basically, um, we had hit a point where I started playing the guitar more um, as like an accompany to the beats live. And my brother was talking about uh, we needed to have more organic sounding songs, like kind of how we started at our roots, I guess, back in 2010 or 2011. Uh, we were just constructing these sort of ramshackle beats and stuff out of guitars and drum machines and just found instruments and things and um, uh, we at one point one of the songs he was like man we should try to write a an Oasis song and um, I'm not going to play that one today but um, it morphed into something totally different over time but um, basically uh, we were just thinking about how we could write better songs instead of um, just rapping over loops and samples and beats and stuff. Um, so, um, not long after that, uh, we wrote two of those songs on the porch. My brother, unfortunately, passed away last year. That was a uh, hard Rest one. in peace. Um, we all had a really hard time. Rest in peace, Joshua. Bush. And um, at some point, Height and PT and a whole bunch of people came out, um, came down for his funeral. And before they departed, um, after the funeral, we had um, a large gathering out in the woods with a large bonfire. PT brought his synthesizers. That was a that was a it beautiful was very time. magical and um, definitely felt his spirit out there. But um, it wasn't necessarily a party, but more of just a magic ritual sort of in the woods with just very few friends. And um, the next morning before. Height and Burnham went back to Baltimore. Um, I 
they were sitting on the couch and I asked them if I could show them some songs, some different kind of guitar based songs I was writing and I uh, played them for them and uh, in my mind the songs originally I wanted them to be more rock and roll with a live drum set and more of distorted electric guitars and sort of a, like a psychedelic rock type album and I uh, turned into something so much more better because um, Colin had a beautiful vision for the songs and he really took them to a new place yeah um, I don't want to give away too much, but it's definitely a perfect mix of my style and Burnham's style. If you're um, all familiar with the Digidelics yeah. that I did on the Drones album, the first Drones album, a lot of the, the arpeggios that range into like vocal sampled arpeggios and sort of odd things like this and, and uh, quick eighth note timing on synth arpeggios and stuff like that from Sampler and also using them as like sort of gentle strings and atmospherics. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I had always wanted to take the approach. I mean, once the Drones record happened, I had always been looking for a way, another m way to move forward with the acoustic sort of, because it's so easy to take those acoustic elements yeah. and turn them into digital stuff with things like Sampler and the MPC. Yeah. And so I've been sort of wanting a, you know, some kind of project. And once I heard uh, what you had done with, with those songs, and when I knew that you wanted something different out of them, and I had the Pulsar also. I had recently yeah. acquired the Pulsar drum machine. Drink, drinks, footbags, what's up? Yo, what's up, footbags? Um, Canada in the house. Canada in the house, all the way down from North Carolina. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Basically, I played him the songs, and then about two or three weeks later, uh, Burnham came back again to this other house that I was in, and uh, we just spent like a week gearing up for the Wraparound Robin tribute show to Josh, and then Ooh. also doing Zinzerna, slight demoing of these songs. Yeah, we recorded a bunch of them as guitar demos. riffs, yeah, and then he took the guitar riffs after his visit then, took, took him, him home, up, took him home, and then played pianos, um, all kinds of stuff on him. But a lot of the beat constructing occurred uh, about a month or so later when he came back. With the pianos. With the pianos and some of the other synths and things. And uh, basically, uh, Burnham stayed here for a couple weeks with me and- uh, Epic time. Epic times and um, a lot of the times I'd be at work and we'd be producing the record. I'd go to work and then come home <laughs> on my breaks or after work and he'd be like, look what I did. And I'd just be grabbing the stuff, sounds yeah. that you made and some of the piano sounds. Yeah. And then, you know, like you had the idea for me, um, I believe it was actually for Crunch and Leaves mm. to do the, like the, um, the generals gathered in the masses. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. I, <clears throat> I butchered that right there, but, yeah. um, Sometimes I can pull it off. And and actually those made it into the song, but just as chopped up vocal sounds. Yeah. Like sort of go like blah, 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 nah, 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 nah. in reverse and all yeah. different types of ways and So there was you know, there was a lot of sort of letting your melodic and, and, and creative ideas yeah. guide me and then just taking those and creating yeah. different landscapes out of them, digital landscapes. That would go to the BPM. Yeah. Because before during the demo process we sort of decided BPMs that would be good to work to. Um, and so since then, um, basically, it's been about six or eight months, I mm -hmm. think, since we basically laid all the tracking down and everything for it. And uh, we've both just been very busy with life and stuff, but finally got back together in the past couple days to finalize these mixes. Oh, yeah. And uh, while Burnham was gone, I did some you know, cleaning oh. up of the sessions and uh, just basically got them ready for both of us to spend some time digging in and getting the mixes done and everything. Um, but basically, he's been here the past couple of days just finalizing things. and um, Both of us going through the mixes, and, listening, yeah. on, listening on multiple systems, took the car drive, you know, the obligatory car test. Uh, uh, walked up a mountain. Walked up a mountain. I feel tired. This show almost didn't happen. I came down off that mountain and I was... Poor. I was feeling it. They, you know, you warned me, and I was like, I got this. I've been up mountains. It's been a couple of years since yeah. I've been up a mountain. I was, yeah. you know, it was worth it though. 
Oh yeah, definitely. My legs are gonna be jello tomorrow, but it's gonna be totally worth it. And but I think, um, anyways, with the music though, I wanted to say I, I think it's really special that uh, Burnham never took away from um, the singular instruments that I played or anything, but rather sort of build soundscapes behind or around. Right. Them. Well, that, that comes stuff. from, yeah. you know, the same stuff that you have right. been learning. And actually, I got to say, you kind of did not necessarily do yourself justice in terms of like, um, when I came in to do, to work with you on these mixes, they were 85, 90% there, most yeah. of them, you know, like you, you um, I know that you recently went to school for this stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, it's definitely paid off because you yeah. definitely, they had a clean, clean, cleanliness to them, you know, yeah. it was mostly just getting a few other characteristic yeah. things like I like to do a nice yeah. telephone filter every once in a while basically any chance I can get um, put throw a little telephone filter on something but um, yeah so it's just using those same kind of skills in terms of mixing you know I know to stay away from those mid ranges yeah. where your guitar is going to be sitting right. and, and just do some high plinkies and maybe some real low mid range type stuff and yeah, I think it worked. I mean, it worked out really well. The yeah. stuff that you did live the other night, uh, yeah, for the Richard Benjamin Memorial Fest was really excellent. I could t totally see the progress from the last time that yeah. we played at the uh, yeah. Baltimore Rap Round or the uh, the Rap Round Robin. Yeah. So basically, this time that we've been apart, um, I've been playing shows few and far between, but just like test launching this mm, material live, right? To sort of gearing up for the actual songs as being live or the release and just kind of putting feelers out there for people to uh yeah hear yeah. this new shit we're working on totally and i know that you're i mean you're working on a whole new live way of doing things with the electric guitar in tow yeah. and i mean you you brought up the electric guitar before right for shows yeah. but this is more of a, a feature of like yeah. this is it this for is like a part of the set part of the whole set thing, so so before it was just like uh sorry no good before it was mostly just like um, accenting the main parts of the beats and songs with a guitar, right? But now it's like more centered towards the the guitar. Yeah, like the track is a backing, backing track for you and guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I mean, this is all really cool and really exciting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think a lot of us from uh, MC Homeless's project Reptoids to my stuff with the Dust Cat Dream yeah. Drum Machine to your stuff with this new direction with uh, you know. A, like hip hop oriented folky rock music. Rock yeah. music. I mean, I wouldn't even call it folky, more rock. Yeah. Classic yeah. rock sounding. This sounds like a car, um, like a like a road trip album. Especially yeah. the first two cuts, I feel, um, are just very like, bam, the beginning to an epic yeah. adventure between friends. I feel like that energy really came across, you know. So, um, actually, do you want to give one of the, one of these songs? Yeah. Which one do you want to play? I'd say uh, Dealer's Choice. Uh, well, since you got the iPad out, and then D, maybe we'll right. rock this uh, Went Walking. We'll, we'll rock Went Walking. Okay, so this song is called Went Walking, and it's a track off of uh, Nothing Beats a Try, which is the new the new album. Acoustic version. Let's go. Walking, walking 
around, I went looking, but nothing was found, I went walking. Went down to the creek, got down on my knees, got down in the dirt, looked up at the trees, sun shining through the leaves, I looked up at the sky. Ask God to save me, ask God to get high, I went walking. Walking around, I went looking, but nothing was found, I went walking. Went walking, walking around, I went looking, but nothing was found, I went walking. Yeah, uh, and now this is uh, this is one of the things I think uh, that is is nice <laughs> is nice for me about this project and what I look for in yeah fruit bags yo glad to glad to broadcast it from here to all the way up north and um, you know the the songs already have a really good and solid feel the same way that a lot of classic rock has that like just solid songwriter feel where it is already built it's got a structure that works and is written in a classic kind of structure form although they aren't all like that yeah. but um the meat the meat and potatoes of what it is they already had that when i heard you play them for me and dan back right after uh, the the funeral was uh it was clear that th this had like the meat ready to build Already upon. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. already ready to get yeah. built upon. So, uh, yeah, just really exciting to be working on this project. It's not like anything else that I've ever worked on. And that has felt like a lot of fun. And, okay, so I've been thinking about this. We, me and um, Aaron, we just watched this Tom Petty uh, documentary about when he created Wildflowers, um, which was a solo album that he did where he actually, I mean, it's funny. Like, we might as well tell it because it's funny because it's yeah. like, like, it's like he wanted to do a solo album, but they also were having problems with their drummer, whose name was um, Stan, Stan Lynch. Stan Lynch. Stan yeah. Lynch, the drummer from the Heartbreakers. Um, they were kind of having problems with him, so then he's like, okay, I want to do this solo album. And he, you know, sends everyone away, I'm doing this solo album. But then slowly but surely, as he's Each picking... Each band member <laughs> starts coming back. <laughs> who he wants to work mix. with on the album, yeah. It's like the band members start coming back, and eventually like the entire band is sort of assembled, yeah. minus Stan Lynch. Yeah. So it's like, it was just a very elaborate way of kicking the drummer <laughs> out of the band. Um, it's a wonderful documentary, though. It's, we, we had a good time watching it's, it. It was cool. Yeah, it's a really good documentary, and something struck me that I feel like happens to a lot of artists um, when he was talking about working with people, like working with the people that he wanted to work with, you yeah. know, and they're having such a good time making this album, yeah. you know, that's one of the things that they really um, spoke about a lot was how much fun they had had doing the album, and I have found when you're working on something that you really feel passionate about, that is generally the feel, it's a lot of fun, it's you know, been a lot of fun working on this album with you. And I realized, you know, it's like, a, a, it, you can you can wait till you get famous to work with the people that you want to work with and have fun like that, or you can just do it now. Just like pick the, the friend that does inspiring stuff and, you know, do a collaborative thing with them and, and put in the work together. It's like, we don't have to wait to be famous or, uh, you know, at, to any time in the future to work with, to have that experience of working with somebody who creatively inspires you and work and, and putting work in. I feel like it's such an exciting thing to hear about when the greats do it. It's like, oh yeah, we decided, you know, and pulled this guy in and this guy in. Yeah. And in my own, uh, you know, small world, I have my own superheroes, my own, you right. know, like, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we got him in the studio? And it's like, boom. And, you know, you could just do that. That's not something that you have to wait on. Already doing it. Already doing it. Already living the dream. Like, yeah. 
basically, um, I've been I've been watching a lot of Eckhart Tolle, mm-hmm. and he's like, uh, he basically is talking about like he wrote this book called The Power of Now, talking yeah. about living in the moment and yeah. stuff. Where it's like, you you take what, how you would feel, if you had the thing that you wanted, and you just feel that now, like right. like you know just like you're already there. You don't need anything more than but then to just feel, you know that it's time to do it. Resources and time are necessary. Yeah. But they'll follow if you make them the most important thing. Definitely. You know, prioritize. But uh, let's see. So we've been through what happened with the Digidelics. And, and I think we should shout out Chewy and Dez, the two studio dogs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, these pups are incredible. You're going to see them later in a video. We've been shooting some video for the uh, you know, video files on this uh, album. And we shot some stuff going up the mountain. We shot some stuff walking around, and the dogs are 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 in there. So you're gonna get to you're gonna get to meet Chewy and Dez, yeah. uh, see their best features. Uh, it's it's really exciting. Just this whole experience, you know. I know that th- this aspect of the Jelly Bush, this incarnation that we're sitting in right now, is not going to be that for much longer. You're moving out. Yeah. You're moving back to yeah. the beach. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say too much about it, but right. I feel like uh, we had this conversation. Wherever it goes, um, I will make some announcement at some point. But um, I feel like we had the conversation about like finding a project that never truly ends, and you're just always building upon it. And I feel like uh, the Jellybush concept is a state of mind, and um, just good times, good hangs, music, and toys available uh, at the ready for us to create. And just having a good environment, eating this good food, um, cooking vegetables from the garden. Yeah, mad pots of coffee and um, bean juice. Yeah, but yes, headed to the coast um, to start a new bush 2.0. That's gonna be really cool. Yeah. More on that soon. Yeah, yeah, very soon. We'll, we'll definitely keep you up on it. Actually, I think I do want to do the little rap thing at the end, but I think I'd also like to hear. Uh, Steam chat. Steam chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, if so you want to play along. It's in E. It's in E. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. E and A, or E and B, but yeah, mostly E. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this next song is called Steam Chalice, and the inspiration for it is actually oh, yeah, sort of about the that. Jelly Bush uh, idea of having this sort of. Um, jungle garden type studio uh, free space where we can uh, blaze herb and not be bothered by anybody and make noise and do what we want but um, I wrote this song because I really uh, I found this hilarious YouTube channel and it's about this man um, down in Jamaica this Rasta Farian um, vegan cook and he cooks everything on a steel barrel and uh, he does have power and you know running water and cool stuff but it's mostly like off-grid type rugged living and um, it's just a really funny hilarious show and he's got like his own little scene down there and it really uh, I admire him and um, a lot of the things that he does and his knowledge and uh, it's just a really funny and fun show to watch it's called Ross Kitchen and um, yeah, it kind of inspired me to write this song and also sort of inspired uh, one of the main inspirations for my jellybush type space. This one's called Steam Chalice. Steam 
this ganja ain't a question. Walking barefoot talk. And there ain't no guessing. Hot pot in a blaze of wood fire. Take a sip, steam chalice, steam chalice, steam chalice, steam chalice. Barry A. Yeah, hey Barry. Oh, Barry, what's up? I haven't seen you since Baltimore. Thanks for coming through. That was a good show. Felt like I'm I'm glad that you got to see Easy Jackson. But um, anyways, hi Barry. Good to see you as usual. Uh, so that was Steam Chalice. Oh yeah. Welcome to bed. You wanna end it off like that? Yeah, yeah. We can. Dogs are being a little. Yeah, these dogs are getting restless. So we're gonna hit this off. This last one is a is a little track. Willing to bend, willing to break. I ain't side show bar. Stepping on a rake, crunching these leaves underneath my feet. The rain brought the brown water on down to the creek, cutting the vines, clearing the ivy. Got a cutlass in my hand, and my dogs right beside me. Try me. Junk stuck to the gaps in my shoes Going all in and we ain't gonna lose Headed to the bush just to grab a little fuse And set it off proper cause we trust no blues Trust no blues You know I get down with these Winston freaks Plus crunch leaves from the creek to the beach Run under the dinner of a man damn kitchen That means that we're ready with the damn canteens About to crack a cypher like it's World War III Tapping out a message under sycamore trees Chalice full of cush in a mean to Waiting on the devil with a mug full of bean juice That was called Chop, Chop Up the, the lock. lock. We got other guests on that Posse one. track, actually. Posse track. This is just a little mandatory acoustic. Cold Rhymes posse track. A little acoustic meltdown. Yeah, I love the fact that Cold Rhymes is known yes. for its posse cats. Yes. But uh, yeah, we got these dogs getting a little bit restless. So as usual, I'm going to go out with a thank you from all for all my dust cats. The new thank you, the thanks outro. Let's see if this actually works. Yes, it does. Got all my Digicats and I appreciate y'all. We got my uh, my Zerna cats, Kenny Creech, Erica P, Brittany P, Melissa, Gerard Schultz. We also got the Dusty Cats. And if you want to become a, a Dusty Cat or a Digicat or a Zerna Cat, uh, you can get a, a personal Zerna drawn for you. Uh, most of y'all in the audience right now are Zerna cats. We got Wayne Anderson, Anna Carmen, Becca Magsig, Sam Seeger, Visitor 10, Austin Cat, Eric Akers, gonna see you soon. Jen Dudley, we got big plans in the future. Queen Cat, hope to see you someday soon. Miss you. Scarlett Herrera, the, the most recent, I believe, Dusty Cat. We got the number of 
Lumi Cats is one, and that is my man, Doggy. Dogfuck is the name. I just saw them do an excellent show at this place called The Alley in Richmond. Beautiful spot. I'm hoping to do a show there at some point soon. Uh, they did that with uh, Duct Tape Jesus. It was a great show. Excellent to see. But last but not least, uh, we got, actually we got two. We got Mama Cat, who's not pictured, but she's always a great supporter of the things that I do. And we got Berry Cat, my royal blue. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Uh, good words to live by. Focus your mind. Um, and you know, make things happen. Make what you'd what, make what you'd like to happen happen. We're here at the Jelly Bush, making what we'd like to happen happen. And we got King Chewy. Chaos. We got King Chaos. King Chaos is the Zerna. This is Chewy, bit of a chaotic beast himself. But we love we we love Chewy so much. Uh, his big uh, big uh, what, what was the name Falcor. Big big Falcor looking ass. Uh, but yes, thank you all for joining us this week as we talked about Nothing Beats a Try, the upcoming album from MC and I, heavily, heavily worked on by me. I don't think we're going to call it a duo album necessarily, but it's like, it's like by, yeah. it's like MC and I by P.T. Burnham, yeah. you know, and, uh, and really looking forward to giving that to your ears. It's going to be a little bit down the road as we're getting it mastered, but yeah, thanks for joining us while we talked about it. I hope, I hope you found it enjoyable. Next week, I'll be back with the synths and the jamming, so I hope to join you. Uh, I hope that you'll join me uh, next week when that all goes down. MC and I, is there anything you'd like to say before you roll? Thanks for having me, man, and thanks for coming back. A pleasure. Thanks for having me down here. Love you too, dude. Yeah. All right. Take it easy. Peace. Boosh.